How many supercharger can I access to recharge my Tesla? Hi everyone, today we are going to speak about Tesla supercharger network. We are going to review the global footprint and how many are in the US, in Europe and in Asia. We are also going to talk about why Tesla has created this superb supercharger network in the world and we'll review the different types of supercharger available and also what the competition is doing in that space. Then we'll look at when to use them or when to avoid using a supercharger and the difference between charging EV vehicle versus charging in a petrol station and we'll finish with the downside and the upside of the Tesla supercharger network. So relax and enjoy this video! So let's start with the numbers. Tesla just announced passing 25,000 supercharger around the world with just over 2,700 supercharger station. This is a big jump when you think about it. They started in 2012 with only six station based in California and now it's a global footprint. Just a few months ago, at the end of 2020, Tesla had only 20,000 charging stalls, over 2,100 supercharging stations in the world. So in just a few months, it's quite a huge jump. So we are going to look at this global footprint. It's big in the US, so let's start with North America with 1,101 super station. And as you can see in this map, most of the US states are covered with chargers, even in Mexico and in Canada as well. But I was trying to find the blind spot and I think the two states where there is least for the moment are North and South Dakota. But if you are watching this video from the US, please let me know if there is other state where you suffer. What you see in the gray side is the one we are going to be delivered in 2021. So at least more Tesla superchargers are coming up in the US. And if we now look in Europe, we are going to see a similar map where the stations are well, well deserved from the top of Norway to the bottom of Spain, all the way to Greece with 592 stations in Europe. And even if we zoom in to the UK, we see that the picture is pretty good. Too. But where are the blind spots in the UK? I think the, what I found are in Wales, where there is not that many chargers available, and also in Cornwall, where only one is live today. So if you are watching from the UK, please let me know where are the blind spots for you. Maybe Scotland or maybe another places. But now let's look at Asia, the third largest available network for Tesla with 498 stations all over the Asia Pacific region, going to China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore and South Korea and even Japan. So a great, great uh, number of stations available in Asia and the number is still growing as well. So why Tesla created this huge network in the first place. The first and main reason is because people are afraid to buy an electric car now because they can't drive long distance or that's their perception. So that's why Tesla created a huge network to be able to prove them that you can drive everywhere in the US, in Europe or in Asia with a fully electric cars. The second reason what they did it is to bring electricity directly from the power plant all the way to the charging station. And the third reason is to be able to reduce cost versus a petrol car for a long trip. And it's a great network, but be careful, you have different type of supercharger available at each station. So the most common one for now is uh, version 2. Those are the most deployed and they are 150 kilowatts of power. And be careful because when you go to charge at those stations, they share the same power between two stalls. 
So you have to look at the bottom of the stalls and if there is a number 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, make sure that you don't share it with somebody else if there is other space available or your speed will be reduced. The newest one are the version 3, the fastest uh, available power station there at 250 kilowatt. And this will be able to get you a good charge within 15 minutes to let you go to the next station. So that's very good to be able to do long trips. But apart from version 2 and version 3, in the US you also have the city charge. We are at 72 kilowatts. I didn't see any of them in Europe or in the UK for the moment. So if you have some, please let me know or send me a pictures in the comment below. And what is the competition for the Tesla supercharger network? So thanks to ZapMap, we have some good statistics available in the UK. 10,000 connectors available with 4,400 devices in May 2021, based in 2,900 different locations. It represents quite a steady growth year on year over the last 10 years for the different model of cars and the different type of connection as well. And if you look at the different type of providers of those supercharger, BP come at top above Tesla. But then when you select with high performance supercharger, so fast speed location, it's only 77 location in the UK. And if you look at Shell, for example, you only have eight different locations. But they have good plans. They are going to change that and transform old petrol car station like this one to brand new uh, Shell recharge station dedicated to electric vehicle. And they announced that last year to have those big plans, but so far what we see is just a construction site with nothing available yet. So be patient if you want to go to the to competition of Tesla. The big problem with the competition so far is speed. A lot of time you have 50k charger and not 150 or 250k charger. The number of stations is still quite low. The distance between the station on the competition is still quite far away from each other and unfortunately a lot of them are broken when you arrive at the station. What we see as well is a slow deployment to reach a big network for the competition. And the last point which I think is a negative for the competition is all the brands are going to share the same network where in Tesla for the moment it's dedicated to Tesla car only. But this may change in the future. Tesla is not against opening up to other competition. And now, when should you use the supercharger? In fact, Tesla doesn't recommend you to use them too often because rapid charging can damage the battery if it's used a lot. So use them when you do a long distance trip. And the statistic around that is currently only 10% of the time of the charging is done at supercharging because people charge in other way when they are at home. They will charge from their wall chargers uh, if they live in the countryside. If you live in a dense city like London, you will find other alternatives like lamp post charging or city charger available for you. And for any other reason, you always have your granny charger where you can plug in any electricity outlet if you are traveling or if you go to France and you need to recharge as a car in a normal electricity plug. But let's look at the difference of charging between electric car and a gas station. Well, the big difference is when you have an electric car, you charge where the car is parked. What I mean is when you are going shopping or you are at home or you are at work, you are going to drive to a place where you can charge your car and you forget about it. You have quite a lot of Tesla destination charger available for you and then it's very different. You don't think about it and you don't plan the same way where your car is empty to go to a petrol station. So if we look now at the downside of the Tesla supercharger network, there are a few things that you have to think about. One is you need to 
plan before you go on a big trip to make sure the road that you are going to take have Tesla supercharger available. But this you can just rely on the GPS of your car will plan it for you or you can do uh, use the app a better route planner will do that for you as well before you go. Some area in the US, in Europe, and I'm sure in Asia as well, are supercharger deserts. Uh, what I mean is there are blind spots, no charger available. So in that case, you will have to find alternative. Competition of the supercharger or destination chargers are available and you can look at that. In the UK, we use ZapMap to be able to look at that. And the other downside is sometimes the supercharger are on the back of a parking lot quite far away from the shops or the food station. So you have to do a bit of exercise to go to a break. But the upside is quite good. It's so simple to use. It's a plug and play. You pay on your app and you don't think about it. The other upside is that it's always working. I never had any problem going to a supercharger and see them broken, but I did many times with the competitions. And it's almost as fast as charging a petrol car now with a V3 version 3 supercharger. You stay for 15-20 minutes and then you are back on the road. So those are all the great benefits you can have with a Tesla supercharger network all around the world. I hope with all those tips, you can now plan a super long trip across America, right, from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, 3,000 miles, or from the top of Europe to the bottom of Europe as well. There is enough charger available to do those trips too. And that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoy it as I did. And if you like it, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe for helping me to do more video as well. I will leave you with some of those images in London and I hope to see you soon on another video. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.